I would like to welcome everybody to this week's edition of the College of Complexes. We meet every week at Dapper's East Restaurant at 2901 West Addison Street. And tonight's speaker is Steve Kunjus, college regular and sometimes chair, Steve Kunjus. Come on. All right, all right. Yeah, yeah. Come on, come on to hear how our commander-in-chief has performed for his first hundred days of his eight years in office. We will discuss the first ever issues only nonpartisan president, his passion for America to be great again, will be your passion to be great and relevant again. Yeah. Our, the college consists of the following format. We first have a very brief announcements period. Then we have our main speaker. Then we have our, our question and answer session, which we would like to keep confined to questions because at the end of the question period, we have our infamous rebuttal period where You'll each be given an amount of time to speak on the subject or off subject, whatever you desire. <laughs> but we'll see how it works. So, to quote several people here at the college, without further ado, let's get a warm, rousing round of applause for Steve Kunjus. everybody. Thanks for showing up on a great topic. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be shy to uh, be a little vocal tonight. If you're happy with something, we want to hear it. If you're not, we want to hear some booze. Don't be shy. Don't hold back. All right. Hello and welcome. My name is Steve. I'm not a Democrat or Republican. I'm an issues-based person. You want to talk about abortion, you want to talk about taxes, pollution, we can talk. But not from a Democrat or a Republican perspective. I refuse to be part of the commonplace hate from the Democrat party of putrid, bile, and bile. Libertarians! Libertarians! <laughs> or a Green Party, or a Green Party, or a Socialist. Socialists. <laughs> their, uh, their protests from November 2016 yeah. through about April 2017 were just disgusting. Yes. I, uh, they were spewing hate. I got nervous and grabbed my gun. Those haters on TV were just down the street protesting. Yikes. I'm just kidding. I don't own a gun. But I also refuse to be part of the Republican Party of hate. It was great to see the kids in the streets protesting. Do you guys think it was fun to see them out there? They were uh, shouting and everything. It was as if they had no idea how a person becomes president. They had no clue. It was great to see the pissed off kids in the street. No matter how many marches and signs and banners they displayed, President Trump was still their president the next morning, the next week, the next month, the next year, the next four years, and probably the next eight years. There we go, there we go. A little applause, a little applause. There we go. If you like it, show it. If you don't, I want to hear some moves. Come on. It was funny. It was funny to hear the ignorance that is in our society. Namely, we all heard folks say, Hillary got the most votes, the popular votes. But she's not president. Ignorance by the protesters. The Twelfth Amendment. The twelfth. Does anybody know what the Twelfth Amendment is? Ratified in 1804. 1804, y'all. That's over 200 years ago. Is where we get the Electoral College, and that's how we've been electing our presidents, state by state. And all other elections are by popular vote. Most elections are the candidate with the most popular votes takes all, usually. Some municipalities want you to have at least 50% of the vote or we have a runoff. The example is our own mayoral election not too long ago. Does everybody remember that? Mayor Rahm Emanuel? Yeah, yeah. They do a runoff. All right. There you go. <laughs> there you go. The protesters wanted things their way and no other way where a person was acceptable. 
President Obama was and is pissed off at the kooks in the streets protesting right after President Trump was elected. Now, President Obama, uh, what I did is, uh, he explains his extreme disappointment in some speeches. And I will share parts of those speeches, okay? This is President Obama, not me. This is on January 10th, 2017. Here's what he said. Gives me goosebumps, by the way. He says, if you're disappointed by your elected officials, grab a clipboard, get some signatures, and run for office yourself. This is President Obama saying this. Show up, he's still saying this, show up, dive in, persevere. Sometimes you'll win, sometimes you'll lose. This is President Obama, y'all. <clears throat> so hail President Obama. I just got goosebumps reading that out there. So quit your whining and moaning, heed President Obama's words, and take action. Take action, everybody. It's tough to do. Easy to whine and moan, isn't it? Yeah. We can't take action. We got an excuse all the time. Okay, another uh, another uh, speech that President Obama said uh, gave was November 9th. Does anybody remember November 9th? Oh yeah. You all woke up happy, didn't you? <laughs> come on now, come on. Or you went to bed happy. So here's President Obama, here's what he said, November 9th. So this was a long and hard fought campaign. A lot of our fellow Americans are exultant today. A lot of Americans are less so. But that's the nature of campaigns. That's the nature of democracy. It's hard and sometimes contentious and noisy. And it's not always inspiring. This is President Obama speaking. And then he says, but to the young people who got into politics for the first time, and maybe disappointed by the results, I just want you to know you have to stay encouraged. Don't get cynical. We've heard President Obama say that quite a bit, haven't we? Don't get cynical. I like that. Very important that he says that to all of us. Don't ever think you can't make a difference. As Hillary, Hillary, as Secretary Clinton said this morning, fighting for what is right is worth it. Do y'all remember Secretary Clinton said that? Fighting for what is right is worth it. Sometimes, you, this is still about, and this is the last paragraph. Sometimes you lose an argument. Sometimes you lose an election. The path that this country has taken has never been a straight line. We zig and zag, and sometimes move in ways that some people think is forward, and some people think is moving back. And that's okay. He said, I, he said, I lost the election. I've lost elections before. So that was November 9th. One, one last area that he speaks is May 7th, 2016. He says, passion is vital. Which, this is President Obama. May 7th, May 7, 2016. Passion is vital, but you've got to have a strategy. And your plan better include voting, not just some of the time, all the time, Obama said. He reflected on his eight years in the White House, saying that he might have achieved more had voters turned out and elected a Democratic Congress. And I say, this is my input, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> We see Trump and his Republican Congress, those bums. It will be the same with a Democratic Congress, because they don't care about us. But we keep voting them back in time after time after time, don't we? We see a familiar name, we put them back in office. One more chance. One more time. We think something's going to change this time. Anyway, that's my input. Also, May 7th, let me continue on with President Obama's speech. You don't think that made a difference? What would have happened if you would have turned out at 50, 60, 70 percent across the country, Obama said? Think about that. That's what he said. And I like this part right here. This is President Obama saying this. When you don't vote, you give away your power and disenfranchise yourselves. Think about that. I'm going to read that one more time. When you don't vote, we give away our power and disenfranchise ourselves. This is what President Obama said. And he continues on. Obama also slammed restrictive voter ID laws, which he said make it difficult for the vulnerable to vote. And I say, show me somebody that can't vote or is having a problem voting. In the city of Chicago, we've been over backwards, everybody, just so you know that. Yes. We do, believe me. And I'll get to that. The next, next, and this is, this is the last paragraph of President Obama. 
He said, it is absolutely true that 50 years after the Voting Rights Act, there are still too many barriers in this country to vote, Obama said. This is the only advanced democracy on earth that goes out of its way to make it difficult for people to vote. And here's my, my input is, yeah, like redistricting and refusal for term limits. Redistricting, think about redistricting, what that does. That puts the incumbent to draw the line wherever they want to keep them in office forever and ever. Same with term limits. <clears throat> the reason I say is because we have a constitutional amendment, another constitutional amendment. Ratted, this one's ratified in 1951. Does anybody know what that one is? It's the 22nd Amendment that says a president can only be elected to, to office for two terms. It's a little more detailed than that, but a president can only be, think about that, a president can only be elected for two terms, but yet we let Dick Durbin, everybody else, go for 35 years, 32 years, Mike Madigan, Cullerton, so if the 22nd Amendment is good enough for the President of the United States of America, why not for all others held to only two terms? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. And, yeah. Right? Come on, come on. Yeah. <laughs> and they don't get a pension either. Do you believe that? Our politicians get pensions? Yeah. What is that about? Uh, we'll have to explore that later on. All right, this is President Trump's report card, the first 100 of 2,923 days. It's like basking in the sun, huh? He gets an A+. Plus. Come on. There we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. All right. This is the inauguration speech. It was 17 minutes long. I'm not going to read it all. I'm just going to do some excerpts out of it. Any more than that would lose interest. So here's what he said, his inauguration speech. President Trump, January 20th, 2017. Giving back power to, the, to you, the people. Washington flourished, but the people did not share in its wealth. The establishment protected itself, but not its citizens. This is your country. It does not matter which party controls the government, but that the government is controlled by the people. A nation exists to serve its citizens. The crime, gangs, and drugs, this American carnage stops right here and right now. For years, this is still President Trump, for years we have enriched our foreign industry over American industry, our infrastructure, only America first. Taxes, trade, immigration, foreign affairs. Rebuild America with American hands. Come on now, do we like that one or what, huh? Buy and hire Americans. Eradicate ISIS from the face of the earth. Rediscover our loyalty to each other. No room for prejudice. The Bible, God's people live together and pursue solidarity. I heard somebody mention earlier, talking about Jesus over here. You guys are all right. Protected by the military, police, and God. All talk and no action. Constantly complaining and never doing anything about it. The hour of action is now. This is President Trump still. Almost done. We will not fail. Black, brown, or white. We all bleed the same blood of patriots. The same glorious freedoms and salute the same flag. See the same night sky and same dreams. You will never be ignored again. We've heard that, We've heard that before, haven't we? <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna do a quick handout. This is about the protesters. I should have handed out at page one, but that's okay. Nixon, Nixon, he's a man. Humphrey's in the garbage can. <laughs> How many people were at the inauguration? So, so I, I think 10 million or something like that. That's what I heard. That's what I heard. Yeah. Uh, what's the latest number? 85. So what I'm handing out right now is about the protesters and why they're so angry. I should have handed out earlier. But anyway, so I, I hear the words, this is me now, me speaking, not President Trump and not uh, President Obama. I hear the words fascism and oligarchy. Rich people contribute to politicians. 
Politicians take the rich folks' money, wink and nod, and pretend to bash the rich. If it wasn't for the rich, the politicians would have no money in their campaigns. <coughs> Honestly, I, I'm just curious, anybody, everybody, has anybody ever contributed to a politician? Seriously, you have? Yeah. Wow, you guys have, okay, okay. I, I never have. I have right. a labor. Interesting, interesting. All right, think about this. Can you think about this? If there are only three people voting on election day, can you envision that? That's how it usually is, only three people. Yeah. If there are only three people voting on election day, the billionaire and you and a family member, if both of you vote for your candidate and the billionaire votes for their candidate, who wins? That's right, you and your family member win. Think about it. If you hate rich folks, go vote. The reason I say that is because a billionaire only gets one vote. Talk about equality. Talk about equality. At the polling booth, a billionaire only gets one vote. And no more than that. That's equality. Fascism and oligarchy. I have never used these words in my life until tonight. We leave it, we live in a system of checks and balances. Just because a president signs an executive order does not mean that it is automatically a law. We have a judicial system to keep those executive orders in check. A system of checks and balances. Think about that. Fascism cannot exist. Oligarchy cannot exist. I don't know about you, but I don't like executive orders. Does anybody like executive orders? Mainly because our system is designed to have the legislator create laws and pass them through the House and Senate after, after the issues have been vigorously debated in both houses. And then the president will sign it or veto it. And if the legislator passes a law and the president agrees to it, they can still go to the judicial. Checks and balances. So when I hear of fascism or oligarchy, these are cop-out words or concepts. Checks and balances within our three groups of government are in charge. That is the executive branch, judicial branch, and legislative branch. This is President Trump's report card. Come one, come all to hear how our Commander-in-Chief has performed for his first 100 days of his eight years in office. You gotta get elected. We will discuss, what's that? He has to get re-elected to be eight okay. years. Okay, okay. elected for four. We will discuss the first ever issues-based only nonpartisan president. We know he is not a Democrat or Republican. His passion for America to be great again will be your passion to be great and relevant again. Also, we knew that Bernie Feel the burn. Does anybody remember Bernie Feel the Burn? Yeah. yeah. He almost had it, didn't he? He almost had it. He was not a Democrat, though. He is only one of two independents in the Senate. And there are zero independents in the House of Representatives. How it came to be that President Trump is now in office. How it came to be. Lack of people involved in politicking. Lack of canvassing. Lack of going door to door. Everyone in Chicago is a Hillary voter, but no Hillary voter knows or understands that the Electoral College is how the president is elected. State by state is how the presidency is won. Hillary Chicagoans should have gone to known typical red states and canvassed and knocked on doors there. Maybe and maybe not. You could have convinced the Reds to turn blue, but you will never know because you really don't want to get involved as President Obama wants you to. You just want to moan and whine about it so much easier. Does that sound familiar? And the posters. How about the posters? I think all of us were in shock when the poster said, you know, Hillary Clinton's got it wrapped up by between four and eight points. Four and eight points. 
Real, real quick side note, uh, uh, France just had an election two weeks ago, uh, and they, they had a, an election, Mark Macron got 22%, Le Pen got, um, uh, oh, not yet, before that, before the main, the main election, Macron got 22%, Le Pen got 20 next two got 19, 19, and socialists got 6%. So then, so then the posters get on TV. This is like DW or RT, whatever whatever the show is. And, and I'm listening to their, their posters in France. Take a guess what the posters in France said on the day that they had the uh, election. Um, you know, when it was 22 and 20%. The posters in France said, ah, Le Pen's only going to get 35% and Macron's going to get 65%. So I remembered this, because I remember we had chumps here for posters in America, and I want to see how they did in France. Sir, what were the numbers? You just said... 65-35. Say, say again? 65-35. Was it? 55-45. I thought it was more like 64-36, uh, something like that, but it was really close. It was really close. Now why can't our posters do something like that? I think our posters don't know. I don't think they understand how many cities. Does anybody know how many cities are in America? People didn't want to admit they were voting for Trump. 19,000 cities in in America. 3,144 counties. These posters in America should be fired and never rehired. Yeah. Get rid of those bums. There were 17 Republicans and about five Democrats running for office. You knew that Hillary was a shoe-in, or as many of us were hoping, that everyone was feeling the burn. He should have won. But we know that the DNC knocked him out by working very vigorously against the burn. Okay. We know that 66% for Macron. 33.9% from Le Pen. And they called it two weeks before an election. They yep. called it 35-65. Hallelujah to those posters in France. We need to hire those folks for our posters in America. Now, strategically speaking, I would have canvassed and talked to my folks, and we could have voted against candidate Trump during the primaries if all Hillary voters voted in the primaries against Trump. Yes, registered as Republicans. He might not be our president today. Everyone does not think like that, though. And, and your record would show you vote a Republican. Oh, my. <laughs> we have 20 electoral college votes in uh, Illinois. Does anybody know who has the most electoral yes. college votes? California. California. Anybody know how many? 58. Also, does anybody remember super duper delegates? Super duper delegates. Yes. It was like about 800 delegates. What was it? 800, 750, something like that. Some ridiculous amount. And what about the third and fourth party for president? Thank goodness we had a big uh, uh, turnout for the Libertarian and the Green parties. I hope we get a lot more out there for those parties. What a great time in history that we have. What a great person and President Trump that we have. This is truly, this, that is truly concerned about all of us. <laughs> President Trump, come on. <laughs> there we go, there we go. Fired up. Fired up. All right, legal. The next topic is going to be legal immigrants. They are all welcome. We love everyone, all immigrants. We just don't appreciate undocumented, nor the 90-day visa folks that overstay their visa, also illegals, which, by the way, are the majority of undocumented in the United States of America. I certainly knows that. Shame on them. The best way to discourage illegals or undocumented is to ship them back to their country's origin. Let's hit the pause button. But, 
undocumented that are here for at least five years or more need to have amnesty granted today. This happened in 1986. Amnesty was granted. Why can't we do that today? <clears throat> Meaning, they need to be given a pathway to citizenship. When you hear about 12 million people, first of all, we're not gonna we're not gonna deport all 12 million. First of all, they have zero pathway to become a citizen. They have zero legal rights to work in our country. We're keeping them hostage, indentured servitude. We are raping them. They need to be granted amnesty today. All right, all right. Forget back taxes and all the other bullshit that you want to stick to them. Just grant them amnesty and secure our borders, and then ICE can step in and deport all undocumented. But keep in mind that the undocumented love this country, and I love them. We should schedule, think about this, we should schedule a field trip at the college, at this college, to go to Pilsen and Little Village to get to know them. They are great. Sincerely, I'd like to set that up. The majority of undocumented are not from Latin American countries. In 1986, during that amnesty, over 70 countries were represented in the pathway to citizenship. Now I'm going to talk about the wall. I'm going to give you guys a fun handout, a couple different handouts. I never got the first one. Does anybody know about the wall? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did they pass it back? The wall. The wall, the wall. The wall, the wall. Yeah, just pass it back. Take it, take it and pass it back. The wall. All right, Mr. Gunges, we got some dead air time. All right. The wall is for drugs mainly, which no politician except President Trump has the balls to admit. Drugs are a major problem in the United States of America. Drugs, namely marijuana, heroin, cocaine, and meth, are coming in over from Mexico. By the CIA. Does anybody remember Breaking Bad? Y'all remember that TV show? It's made here. Made here, yeah, Arizona. Actually, President Trump has mentioned the drugs several times. <laughs> Obama, here's some other issues about the uh, uh, pre Trump presidency. Obamacare, trade agreements, tax revamping, and the six-country ban. Does anybody remember the six country ban? Yes. Yeah. The reason that we had the ban of those six countries is because they have no governments, not to be trusted or relied upon. I don't know why Sudan and South Sudan and a handful of African countries are not on that list. They have no they and Saudi Arabia. They have no governments either. <clears throat> what is going what is going on in Yemen? No government. South Sudan, no government. Do you want them sending unknowns to our country? Yeah. If yes, they need to move in next door to you, sir. Who said yes? Raise your hand. Yeah. Let them live next door to Dan. Everybody, yeah. shoot them to Dan. Yeah, boy, Dan. Dan, neighbor Dan, neighbor Dan. Equality. That's right. Equality. Get them. Get them. That's right. Right next door to Dan. You will be their chaperone for the next couple of years. President Trump is a great leader of America, but more importantly, you are great, Jim, and have the potential to be a great leader. Okay. Get involved with our political system. I know that you Hillary voters are fuming about the great Trump presidency. As President Obama stated, and I agree 100%, if you don't like it, throw your hat in the ring and get involved. Canvas campaign and run for office. This is what President Obama has said in the last year in office. And always remember that every vote counts. Do we have anybody that's on social media? Social media folks. There we go. Social media? Social media? Remember that every vote counts. 
1,000 to 50,000 of your best friends from Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, etc. could have made a difference in this past election. But those 1,000 to 50,000 friends, likes, hits, etc. could have made a difference if, if they would have voted. If you don't vote, it ain't gonna happen. You know why I say that? Because only 33% vote in non-presidential years and about 50% in presidential years. My question, where in the heck are the other 50% that don't vote? We bend over backwards to give you a chance to vote two weeks before the election. If you're not a felon and, or not a... And from 6 a.m. till 7 p.m. the day of the election and, and if you're under a rock somewhere. Has anybody ever been under a rock somewhere? Yeah. Or in Iraq. <laughs> you can get an absentee ballot. An absentee ballot. You, you don't even have to show up. You don't even have to show up. Just find a 49 cent stamp somewhere. Voter suppression. Also, prove it. Prove it. There is not. There's we will go down tomorrow and we will figure it out together. Also, President Obama set the tone for a peaceful transition of power. He accepted the results, as did Secretary Clinton. Why do you still refuse to accept the peaceful transition of power? Look into your dark, hateful hearts and ask yourselves, why are you being so resistant? President Obama and Hillary Clinton both have accepted the new president, helping President Trump and encouraging his team to have a very smooth transition. Because remember, because remember, President Trump's success is your success, and his failure is your failure. Who said that? Yeah. 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 Breaking windows, breaking windows in D.C., or setting limos on fire does not get you a vote. That boy should have voted on November 8th and got all of his thug friends across America to vote on November 8th. He would have been a happier person, not dressed in all black from head to toe. Who says that? But would have emerged from the voting booth as a person that would have been a next fashion icon with some color in his life. Maybe some orange color or green or blue or red. Can you envision one of these boys and girls dressed in black? in all black, emerging from the polling booth, dressed in vibrant colors, their whole outlook of the life would have been greater. Who said that? Right? Is that Trump? Think about that. Visualize that. Those kids dressed in all black, you know what they do, right? They, ha they have hammers underneath there and breaking windows, setting limos on fire instead of voting and dressing in colors. The first 100 days, November 8th, President-elect Trump is not even president yet. The whole world is shaken up. The whole world is shaken up. Of course, it's the whole idea. Stop taking us, we the American people, for granted. Stop expecting us to give you millions of dollars. Stop expecting us to fight your wars. Stop manipulating your currency. Stop dumping your exports at below market price. Corporations. All you socialists and 401k folks and pension folks are hereby notified that everyone can own stock. Not just one person owns a corporation, just so you guys know that. That's not how it works. You can buy penny stocks. You can buy up to Warren Buffett stock. Does anybody know how much Warren Buffett stock costs? Yes. How much? $100,000. Close, for close. One share. Yeah, $250,000 for one share. And, and, and we, we, we benefit when corporations do good financials. President, you, you can Google it if you want. President-elect Trump got corporations to stay in the USA and keep jobs here and invest in the USA. Carrier, Ford, Toyota, leaders from all sectors met with President-elect, IT leaders, Labor and union, he got paid out. He loves the labor and union leaders. I don't like Russian propaganda. Even Steve Harvey, he met with Steve Harvey. Come on, would Paydock meet with Harvey? Come on. Come on. Come on. Is this your opinion? He wouldn't do it. He wouldn't do it. Trade deals. Trade deals, NAFTA. 
TPP, China, the entire EU, Asia, Middle East. The president wants to have trade deals that benefit us. What's wrong with that? And not prop up other countries. World leaders call President Trump to congratulate him. And then health care is the next subject. Health care. I'm going to tell you all what. I got a, uh, I had Obamacare for three straight years. It's not, it's not that it's Obamacare. It's actually called ACA. Affordable, uh, affordable, the Affordable Care Act. Affordable Care Act. Thank you. I just so everybody knows what I did, I, I was in a system, so nobody can tell me any different. I was in a system, I, I paid $3,000 a year for my premium, no problems, two fifty dollars a month, but my deductible was $6,800. So does everybody know what that means? I got to spend $3,000 a year plus my deductible of $6,800, so then my insurance will kick in after I spent $10,000. And I'm a healthy man. But I don't mind buying catastrophic insurance if that was available. But anyway, I was going to go on a tirade about that, but I'm not going to do it. And was that for all the No, that's good. Tirade. Yeah, tirade. Tirade, tirade. Tirade. What? That was a prong plan, your ACA plan? They, they, they have, you, you can spend 250 the lowest, or you can spend 600 bucks uh, and have a $500 well, that deductible. That only covered 60% then after the... Well, you get what you pay for. Amen. Amen. Exactly right. Exactly right. I really think in 25 years that we will all have Medicare. I think that Hillary Clinton and, and Bill Clinton, in, in, in the early 90s, they had, they had the right idea. We all really do need health care. And they were pushing in the 90s, and finally Obama got it through. And, of course, we're going to have tweaks and problems and issues and complaining and moaning. But I think after we stab each other and poke each other in 25 years, we're all going to have insurance finally, which is a very good thing. I hope it happens like that. And if you really love poor folks today, does anybody love poor folks? Yeah. yeah. All right, you love poor folks. I say give them Medicare and not Medicaid. Yeah. yeah. Medicaid, which is a, I was going to say shitty, but I won't. It is a crappy do-nothing insurance, which many doctors refuse up front. Does anybody know that? Yeah. These Medicaid folks can't go to a dentist. They can't go to a doctor. People refuse Medicaid because they pay nothing to these folks. Doctors refuse uh, ACA, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's good. It's their right. It's their right to refuse anything. Wow. Medicare for all. Medicare for all. There we go. In 25 years, it'll happen. Veterans. There's a $182 billion budget they have. We should give them priority care. That includes going to private hospitals and clinics. Personally, no. I think close down the entire VA system. And listen close. Listen close. Listen close. Give all vets a VA card, and the U.S. Treasury, that's us the taxpayers, will pay the private hospitals and clinics and give the vets a number one priority to the front of the line at the hospitals and all clinics. If we really care about our veterans, we'll give them a card and go to private hospitals. Shut down the VA system. It's corrupt. It's lousy. It's redundant. Redundant. It's parallel. Parallel redundancy. VA for all. The A for all, exactly. Give them the card. I agree. No, nope, no, nope. we're the, not agreeing. The, the stock market, in different ways we were agreeing, the stock market rose, a strong sign of confidence in our corporations. Does anybody know that in May 2016, the amount was at the Dow Jones, let's look at the Dow Jones, it was 17500 in May 2016. August, it was 18500 November 18th, November 14th, 18,866. As you see, the numbers are going up, up, up. January 23, after the inauguration, 20,100. May 1st, the Dow Jones was $21,006. So there's a lot of confidence in our stock markets. Same thing in the 1930s. Militarism. It's a bubble. It's a bubble. It's a bubble. The, dis the dishonest media. Does anybody think we have a dishonest media? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Ooh. Fox News. Fox Fairness News. Doctrine. How about how about some other ones? What some other dishonest news? I don't know how many times 
you guys come up here, stood up here and said how dishonest the media is. Andy, is that okay? Do you, do you adjust don't it? Don't shout into it. They're, they're getting noisy over there. All right, all right, all right. Mm. Um, that takes away all the fun, man. <laughs> Let up shout. There you go. Um, I don't know how many times you guys stood up here and said how dishonest the media is. The slant is all to the right. I never heard of the slant is all to the left. Ooh. What? Shame on you. Pre well, President Trump agrees with you that the media is dishonest. You agree with each other. You and President Trump agree about the media slant. The president is bashing dishonest media for you. Aren't you proud of him? Come on now. Yeah. He's standing up for you. He's standing up for you. He's standing up for you with your thoughts and proof of a corrupt media. Hail the commander in chief. Come on. Hail. 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 Commander President Chief. It slipped out over here. You're on video now. <laughs> I'm merely reflecting the attitudes of the automatic reflex. We coach his President Trump's cabinet picks. What happened to Mitt Romney? Hater of Trump is called before His Royal Majesty, President Elect Trump. What happened to Gingrich? What happened to Chris Christie, Rudy Giuliani? Wouldn't you have loved to see Rudy Giuliani, Duke Gingrich, Mitt Romney, and Chris Christie in the cabinet? Come on, huh? Oh, yeah. Come on. Oh, how cool would that have been? I think we already got a couple with Bad Dog Mattis. Aren't we all tired of Supreme Court justices ruling the land? Nine of those little fuckers with a O. Fuckers with a O. Good news on getting a ninth justice after one year, huh? Oh, yeah, right. All for the Federalists. His name is Neil Gorsuch, just in case nobody knew his name. Neil Gorsuch. Are we happy about him? Yes. He let the truck driver freeze to death. I dislike the nine Supremes because party politics should have zero, zero, zero influence on whether a case comes to the United States Supreme Court or allowed in, and that the justices are chosen for their politics. Party politics should have zero place when deciding a case brought forth to the United States Supreme Court. It should be looked at from a constitutional level. What does it even mean that a justice will vote liberal or conservative? The Constitution is pretty straightforward. And 99.9% .9 of the cases must be rejected and argued in the lower courts with precedent and ruling handed down by the judges that have intestinal fortitude. Just so everyone knows that the United States Supreme Court decides for themselves which cases they allow to be heard and which they reject. Does anybody know how many cases our petition to the Supreme Court every year. Give a number. 3,000, 3,000. 5,000. Higher, higher. 10,000. 7,000. requests are made, and how many are granted? How many are granted? 15. 30. <laughs> heard, heard in court are 80. They can hear 80 in court, and 50 will get no court time, but they'll review those cases. How many a year? So 80 in court and 50, no court time. So it's 130. Executive orders. Does anybody know who had the most executive orders? The most. Obama? FDR. FDR, yeah. FDR. Does anybody know how many FDR had? 284. No. <laughs> 0.8%. No. 284, I'll tell you what. Um, Bush had 291, Obama had 275. Yeah. FDR, take a guess how many he had. 3,728. Executive orders. Coolidge. All for the public good, though. Coolidge had 1,203. Wilson had 1,803. Teddy, does anybody, remember, does anybody here remember Teddy Roosevelt? Yes. Not personally. Well, not personally. <laughs> One of our greatest presidents. He had 1,081 executive orders. And this is a quote from the uh, President Trump uh, presidency. I want to and will keep my campaign promises. 
So on 23 January, the executive order to get out of TPP. I think President Trump saw all the signs of the DNC, and he agreed with the DNC folks, didn't he? Wasn't that why he got out of the TPP? For the DNC folks. Got Holding those signs, right? Yeah. All right. And also, no funding to the NGOs that discuss or are involved in abortion. 24 January, executive order to green light the Keystone XL pipeline and the Dakota pipeline. Anybody excited about that? No. I hear excitement. I feel it. Come on. Also, part of the executive order, here's what I like. Here's what I like. To use only made in America steel and labor pipes in all American pipelines. Oh, yeah. right. And the executive order for Obamacare not to tax or penalize you. Just so you guys know that, that are uh, Obamacare eligible, they fine you $700 approximately for not having an insurance card. Even if you're poor, dirt poor, You'll be fined seven hundred dollars. You get Medicaid. If you if you don't get a Medicaid card or a County Care card, yeah. if you don't sign up. You will be fined seven hundred dollars. So all Obamacare did a very exciting thing. He just forced everybody to get, a, to get a, an insurance card, yeah. not to get fined. But the but the executive order says there will be no more tax or penalize or forcing people to get insurance. You don't if you if your income doesn't hit the level where you got to file, you don't. Fifteen thousand. You don't get fined. You don't get right. Medicaid. So it's you know ten thousand for a single person. A blue state. Right. You got to have, have an insurance card, man. No, but in, no, not you. got to have an insurance card. We'll talk about that some other time, but uh, we'll search it together. Believe me. Okay. An EO for Obama. Um, met, he also met with labor leaders, union bosses. And here's what you guys like the most, I think. There was a media blackout at the EPA, barring any new contracts. Did you guys like that or no? No. All right. no. no, I don't like it. No. All right, all right. It's killed the planet. Good all idea. All right, 25 January. Who needs a planet? President Obama or President Trump, Trump tweets to to Rom, Mayor, Mayor Rom, fix the murderers or I send in the feds. <laughs> And also that executive order to start to build the wall happened on the 20th of January. Does anybody know how many bidders were bid on the on the wall? How many bidders on the wall? Miles. Two hundred. There were two hundred bidders. Does anybody know how long that wall is, or the border? Does anybody know how long the border is from San Diego? El Paso. How many miles is that? Sixteen hundred. Close. Two thousand. Two thousand miles. How much is it going to cost? It'll be a pretty wall. It'll be a pretty wall. Next topic is the U.S. military strategy. Does anybody remember Vietnam? We had reporters and cameras, every single nook and cranny, telling our enemy. Hey, we're going to do this next, we're going to do that next. So the enemy was watching our TV for our strategy. Keeping us so, honest. So you, you got to love President Trump's reluctance to give out our USA plans to invade or bomb or do anything oh militarily. God. You just don't announce what you're going to do. Like the mafia. Does anybody play chess here? Does anybody play chess? Yeah. Yeah. How would you feel if your opponent can read your mind of all your thoughts of various moves, ideas, strategies. You would lose the game in an instant. Well, that is what we do in our military. We give away our plans and strategies, but not President Trump. When did that ever happen? Not President Trump. When did that ever happen? I'm very proud to hear him say that he will not reveal his plans, ideas, or strategies in a military Except matter. Except the Russians. He's going to bomb President Trump. Come on now. Hey. Syria about an hour before up. they bombed that airport. He told the Russians, and the Russians evacuated their personnel. All right, negotiations. Next topic. This comes up quite a bit. Negotiations. Would you consider Trump 
Uh, the same vein as P.T. Barnum. Sir, is this Q&A time? <laughs> yes, I thought it was. Right. Point of order. All right. All right. <laughs> Negotiations. I thought we went to Q&A. My apologies. Okay. Negotiations. He can say whatever he wants publicly, as all presidents do, and twist and turn things behind closed doors or, once again, out in the public. He is negotiating for all of us. Thanks. For the best deal possible. Has anyone ever gone to a flea market or a garage sale or a car dealer or a house purchase or a foreign country? In all foreign countries, negotiation is the rule of the land. And if they go very high, you go very low and must be willing to walk away. You all inside here have practiced negotiations. Sometimes during negotiations, you say, I really don't like it, or want it, or have to lower expectations. Or if you say you really like it, then they got you, because the seller knows that you really, really, really want it, and the price just went up higher and higher. It is truly an art, truly an art form, negotiations, that you all have practiced some of the time or all the time. Even if you have kids, you negotiate all the time. <laughs> NAFTA. Mm -hmm. NAFTA. Does everybody know about NAFTA? Has anybody ever heard of NAFTA? Yes. Yeah. Free, free, oh. free, what is it called? North America Free Trade. Yeah, very exciting. And you will hear a giant up, you know. sucking sound of American jobs. What is it? Was it done? And you will hear a giant sucking sound of American oh, yeah. jobs. Yeah, yeah. Ross Perot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, this is about NAFTA. The handout's about NAFTA. And really, what it, when you read the word deficit, when you read the word deficit, it really means decrease in American jobs. If we have a deficit with a country, that means that we have less jobs in this country because our outflow is less than our inflow. It's terrible. Deficit is terrible. President Trump is just pissed that we don't export more than we import. That is all that there is to it. <clears throat> In any great country, the more that you can export, the more jobs are created. The less that you export, the less jobs that there are. I'm sorry, the less that you export, less jobs that there are. The more, you Im the more you import, the less jobs that there are. He's saying, wake up, people. Here's a scoop. Here's why I am, and you should be pissed off, too. We need to export, which creates more jobs, and import less. Our foreign aid decreased by $7 billion. Thank goodness. NATO, they all must pay a portion of GDP. Does anybody know what GDP means? Gross. Gross. Domestic price. Price. Well, it's pretty damn gross. And, and it is the value of all goods and services produced in a year. All right? Corporate taxes. The average tax in other countries is about 22%. Does anybody know how much American corporations pay in federal income tax? Zero. Zero. 35%. It's zero if you have a loss. How yes. much what do they actually pay? Yeah. 35%. <laughs> like if they make That's the average. I don't know what you're talking about. That's the average. I do. We can go to Yahoo.com right now. Yahoo.com oh, so finance. Pick up business. any one of them. Any that's one of them. You're, you're, any you're one of them. Payroll taxes and sales tax. I'm talking about federal tax, man. I ain't talking about all that. I'm talking about federal tax. Well, on your income. On your income. Payroll tax. On your income. Yes, they have payroll taxes. How much did Trump company pay? He ah. President Trump wants to cut it down to 15 percent. He pays no taxes. That is way too low. Way too low, 15 percent. Those those extra savings will not flow to we the people. So I think he's making a mistake right there. What did it used to be? Coal, 35 percent. Time used to be 80. Coal. Does anybody uh, know that North Korea sends coal to China? Yes. If China will put a sanction on North Korea's coal, China can then buy coal from us in the U.S. Think about the West Virginia folks. They are desperately wanting to produce coal again. 
cut down the mountains. The wall, the next topic, the wall. Build it and they will not come. Build it and they will not come. President Trump's words that work more than a wall. The undocumented folks are feeling the pressure as well as the 90-day overstay folks, which is 70% of the illegal undocumented. Border Patrol agents have the best info of what is happening on the border. They know that drugs are flowing through. The answer is build the wall and grant amnesty today. Stop the CIA. Grant amnesty today. The the Next topic, and we're just about done over here. We've got one more page. I know you guys want me to keep going for two more hours. I can tell. I can feel it in the room. Back, back out of the TPP in favor of bilateral agreements and renegotiate NAFTA with Mexico and Canada. Tariffs on products really flow to us, the consumer. That's a bad idea. Don't be putting that burden on us, the consumer. Also, the undocumented, I don't want to pay five bucks for an apple. Please give visas to the farm workers. Keep my apples at $2 a pound, not $10 a pound. Global warming and climate change. Who gives a crap? But, but, there we go. But, if you want to talk about pollution, littering, recycling, river cleanup, forest cleanup, etc., I'm in for the conversation and action of doing that. Plus education and cleanup. Are you in? Or do you want to talk about pie in the sky and do nothing with meaningless buzzwords, global warming and climate change? What's your Think about for? pollution. Pollution is the key. We've got to clean up the earth of pollution and littering and recycling and keep our rivers clean and our forests clean. Does anybody hate big oil? Next topic. Does anybody hate big oil? Yeah. No. Where's Mike? Yeah. Mike, Mike, where you at? Somebody said yes, they hate big oil. Trump is big oil. ExxonMobil was fined, get this, $20 million for pollution. So what? That happened, yeah, that's that, that happened a couple of uh, months ago. That doesn't help at all. $20 million, that's a lot of money. No, they make a million. Oh, 20 million is nothing to them. Yeah, yeah, it's a laugh. A lot of money to me, but... Two <laughs> of income for the company. Woo, man. Second. Grant Thornton. Does anybody know Grant Thornton? No. Do we have any bean counters? Hey, hey, there's a bean counter here. He's not ignoring, he's ignoring us. Hey. Ernie. Nudge Ernie. Ernie. Nudge Ernie. Ernie. What, what? Ernie, bean come on, counter. pay attention. Paying attention. You ready? You ready? Grant Thornton. Tell the people who Grant Thornton is. Major CPA firm. And what do they do with corporations? Well, well they, they audit their books. Right. Taxes, etc. Yeah. And they, consulting. Yes, sir. They've just been fined. Now, now, now I think this is a big number. Y'all might not. They've been fined in the UK. UK stands for United Kingdom or Britain. They've been fined $2 billion for shitty auditing. Shame on them, Ernie. Out of business. Shame them on them, Ernie. Not lock them up. Military. We all talk about 800 overseas bases, and Trump just asked for 54 billion additional dollars for the military. We Whoa. could have, we could have closed 400 of those 800 overseas bases and saved a lot of money. Cut the waste, abuse, and fraud. Military budget is $824 billion a year. Trump has no political or military experience. Neither do neither did Clinton or Obama. I think that no military experience thing is kind of uh, that passe. Nobody cares anymore. Lincoln had a military experience. <laughs> and he had no political experience. Some people say Trump had no political experience. He's had more closed door sessions passing the envelope to these corrupt politicians and anyone around. So he has a lot of political uh, experience. Trump, all, I often hear Trump use the word best, best, best all the time. Why does he use the word best? I was watching TV the other day. I saw in the CPS. Does anybody know what CPS is? 
Chicago public school system, on their wall it said, we have the best staff, the best students, and the best schools. Maybe Trump was there, I don't know. In the county. Maybe Trump was there. And I think it's 7.30. Hold on, buddy. Hold on. Yeah. Two more minutes. Two more minutes, buddy. Inequality and tax the rich. Tax Charlie pay that. All right. And then we're going to hand out, we're going to hand out the, uh, what all goes into paying the federal taxes. Char or, uh, Bernie just mentioned a while ago. All right, Steve, we got to wrap up. All right, we're going to wrap up. All right, I want to thank you, and don't forget, President Trump gets an A++ for his first 100 days. Let's hear a round of applause. Questions for Steve Conjus. Questions now, right? I got the front hand up first, Steve. All right. According to a recent book written by David K. Johnson, he compares Trump to P.T. Barnum. All right. Would you say that Trump, can you compare and contrast Trump and P.T. Barnum or are they one and the same? <laughs> That's a great question. From the angle of motivating people, I would say yes, they have, They both are great motivational people. Okay, what else? Go ahead. Yeah, he's got another, he's got a question. Now. All right. Uh, yes, sir. Um, you uh, gave uh, Trump rather high marks. High, high marks. Yes, sir. Um, in grading him, was this intended to give him a social promotion after uh, three or four failures, bankruptcies, and he is the only person I know of who ran a casino that went bankrupt. Uh, I don't know how much confidence I would want to place in a guy like that, but uh, enlighten us. What's your question, sir? My question is, <laughs> was this guy given a high grade by you simply to get him out of the class that he was in and move him up, like they very often do in some school systems, um, or did he actually merit? Sir, he's the President of the United States. Uh, I asked the question. And he did very well. He's done very well. For the first 100 days, he's got an A+. Plus. For an idiot. Go ahead, next question. All right, Mo. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. Uh, did I understand you to derive uh, global warming as an issue? I, I don't recognize those words. I recognize pollution, littering, okay. uh, recycling, clear. I want to ask you a question. river cleanup, yeah. and forest cleanup. Yes, sir. But not you said that before. Now, <clears throat> uh, you were very good with figures in your speech. You gave us a lot I of like, terrific, I like terrific figures. Uh, there's one bit of, uh, I, I want to advise you to do so, the most valuable research on figures that you could possibly do, and that is on the cost of global warming already. Uh -huh. Now I'll give you one example. You mean pollution? Global warming. Uh, whatever you want. No, I'm talking about global warming. Let me use my own terms. Let me finish the question. I didn't interrupt you when you were speaking. Uh, I like that. I like that feistiness, sir. All right. Look, I'm going to be 85 on June the 15th, and my short-term memory is not as good as my long-term memory anymore. Anyway. So give me a give me a chance to. I hear myself thinking. All right. All right. All right. Now, I want to give you two examples of costs that are flowing from global warming that is, are seldom discussed. Uh -huh. Number one, the insurance company payouts on damages from flood, drought, and hurricanes, and just a very, very high speed um, winds, uh, is setting world records. Number two, 
all the trouble in Syria, which has cost, which may actually bring our economy down because it will bring the European economy down, but it's already costing tens of billions of dollars uh, of the advanced uh, uh, economies. The trouble in Syria comes from global warming. News for everybody. Uh, the drought. The, the drought forced hundreds of thousands of farmers into the capital city and conditions of course were very bad and that accelerated the protests against uh, Assad and uh, we might have had a protest against Assad. I don't think it would have been nearly as strong. He would have put them down and uh, the problem would be over. Uh, those are just a few hints to you for your future research project to get the total cost of global warming. I don't think you don't so have what's the answer your question? now. What's the total cost of global warming? I think it's already fifty trillion dollars to the world. What's your question? It was a that's the question. What's the total cost of global warming? And you don't know, and that's why I want to assign you to a research project to find out. I think his so question good was, number. can you answer his question? Do you have any, any figures at all on the damage of global warming? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, don't tell we're, me. We're, I'm telling you, don't. Back okay. off, will you? Make it easy. All right, all right. You too, buddy. You too. All right, so we're going to move on to the next person. Go on, Andy. 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 Go ahead. Pick up the next person. Over here. Me. Okay, uh, well, only 10% of the illegal immigration and the refugees are white Europeans. Would you not say, true, sir. Not, not that, true. That's true, that's true. Would you say that uh, George Soros, the Democrats, and the UN are trying to destroy the culture, the white culture of this country? And what, what, what's Soros doing? They're, 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 they're encouraging this. The UN is encouraging all this. Uh, uh, they're trying to diminish the power of, of the white majority as of now. We're not going to be the white majority very long. And you people like you are advocating making these people legal. And uh, they're, they're all, uh, they're not white. I'm not against white, but I'm just saying. They came across here legally. Why should we legalize them? Amnesty, what are you talking about? Reagan did what, it. What do you want to do? You want to deport all 12 million? Reagan They're taking our jobs. Do you want to deport all 12 keep million? Keep it the way it is. What do, you, what, what do you suggest we do with them? Well, we, we could keep it the way it is. They're, they're in our schools, their education, and, and the, uh, the jobs and uh, health care. They're, they're using, we're paying for them now. Yeah, right. They're paying taxes. All right. The Japanese economy is going down because they don't allow non-Japanese immigrants. There's more Asians. There's more. There's more. A lot of Asians. Uh, there's more illegals. Illegal. There's more the, illegal. the only reason they come in, they vote Democrat. They vote Democrat. All those people. Ireland, uh, England, Germany. It is requested that arguments be maintained. I have a question. We would. We would like to have our next question. Right there. All right. Behind him. Right. A question, not a statement, please. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. All right, I have a question. Uh, you said Trump is very cosmopolitan. When he makes fun of people who are, like, retarded, when he says to people, go beat up the guy who's uh, complaining, would you call him a bully? And if he's a bully, is he is the United States a bully around the world? Uh, you know, pushing around Syria, pushing around Iraq, yes, Afghanistan, yeah. uh, all these places for oil. W would you say Trump is a bully? No, sir. No, sir. Okay. Okay. No, no, no. Korea is back. Well, was Jeff Sessions a good a choice for Attorney General, and should we uh, keep the war on drugs? I'm, I'm assuming he's qualified, and uh, that was when you're president, you get to make your pick. So he's qualified, and that was President Trump's pick. To answer your question about the war on drugs, we got a lot of heroin here, we got a lot of methamphetamine, and we got a lot of cocaine. It's messing up our people pretty doggone bad. <clears throat> All we got to do is secure that Mexican border. And I'm going to tell you what, we cut down the availability of drugs. Yes, and to go on one step further, 
We are in America taking back our border by selling marijuana legally in eight states. So marijuana, yes, we keep that legal. Ban the other three drugs. Question over here. Yeah, hi. Uh, my a question about Roy Cohn researched that he was the biggest influence on Donald Trump. He was also a mafia, the leading mafia lawyer that led the McCarthy hearings. That I mean, he's a complete mafia thing, and Donald Trump is just like him. If you you got to admit he is a bully. He is he's actually a mafia you know he fought the justice department and the fact that he is now embedded in the justice department and the CIA explains that our government is a mafia government. We are a, a kleptocracy that's bringing in drugs and heroin and all your information is misinformation. Well, where's your facts? Where's your facts? I, what do you think where's of that? Where's your facts that the CIA is bringing in drugs? I've got it right you here. You bring the facts. Yeah, you I've bring got the, the facts, facts and we'll discuss them. Wait, he's got them too. They're you, you, out you there. Bring the facts. Right. They've been no censored problem. by this government and you the corrupt the mafia facts. state. I, I, I recommend that we talk to the uh, Mexican cartels and see who's really bringing the drugs in. Order, and it's requested that you please keep your statements in the form of questions. We will have a rebuttal period after the question period. Let me, let me oh, clarify that, Tim. Well, all of you that like to give a rebuttal, start thinking of your rebuttals now. Don't give them during the questions. Ask a question now, if it's a question, and then get ready to give the rebuttals in 15 minutes. We will have our rebuttal period in about seven minutes. So start writing them down now. All right. Yes, you, you got a question. My question is, considering that Obama had a fraction of the protest when he was elected president that Donald Trump has gotten, and that Clinton got a fraction of the protest, but when, when, when Trump got elected, he's had a tremendous amount of protest. Don't you think that's due to the fact that there's such a strong left-wing element in this country? Oh my God. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, I've been involved in writing these myself. You had some issue with the Fed executive orders. And why is it the Trump administration finds it so difficult to write one? When the other administrations do this, hire people like me, we write them and they go through. Because And you don't, you don't read about them in the news. <clears throat> You hear about mine in the news. Because what we have is something called checks and balances. And anybody who wants to challenge an executive order can freely take it to court and challenge it. That's why. Why are none under Obama challenged? People didn't feel that they wanted to challenge it. Maybe they liked them. Who knows? All right. He's got a question here. Yeah, you mentioned uh, the term dishonest media. Trump talks about it all the time. Do you think the media is dishonest? Also, do you think, if you do, uh, how would you define it? And do you think we have a free press in this country? That's a good question. I, I think the media has a, a tough job. <laughs> they really got to find out. They got to dig, dig, dig. They have to have uh, whistleblowing people talking to them all the time, <clears throat> you know, anonymously. Um, so, so their job is to create the news. And, uh, I think we have a free press here? Yeah, yeah, I think we have a free press. I think we do. Advertising Corporation. Way in the back. I have a two-part question. Uh-oh, not the two-parter. Not the two-parter. Two-parter. Right. Two and avoid Mike. First of all, Mike is famous for two-parters. What's Trump's handicap involved? What? Three. Three? Three. Really? I don't know. I'm just joking. I don't okay, know. two. Name something concrete that Trump has accomplished in a hundred days. I just like, read it off. I read off all those executive orders. It's not a law. Uh, Name some yeah, of those other laws, man. I want to know some concrete things that he's really done in a hundred days. I just read off. I read off everything to you, man. Bunch of women he wants there smoking or are you listening, man? Come on, buddy. Get out. 
They bring a lot of heroin and marijuana yeah. and barbiturates. He doesn't stop the airplanes and the cars and trucks. They, they do their best. Border Patrol does their best to stop them. Man. And uh, immig immigration. Uh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You said. You said. Uh, when Obama was president, there were, were no protests. There was something called Occupy during Obama. And Obama shut it down because he was scared of all occupied. Yeah. So I think during Obama there was a lot of uh, protests, but he just shut them up and arrested them and beat them up. Now, what is Trump going to do? I, I thought Occupy was about Wall Street. That's what their whole idea was. What? Occupy. What is Occupy Trump Wall gonna Street. Do? That's what Trump's going to do. Yeah, the, the financial crisis. Last question. Uh oh, last one. And Trump's sons have been compared to looking like Beavis and Butthead. Can you comment? And don't that does that influence Trump? Can you give us an impression of who, which one was Beavis, which one was Butthead? Can you give us an impression? Uh, I have a picture here. How about a video? <laughs> there you go. Good. Yeah, yeah, cool. <laughs> Shut up, man. Let's go to get the very bottles. Can you comment on all uh, the reports published by uh, the investigative reporter Greg Faust about voter suppression in 30 states? You know, uh, show, show, show me a voter that's been suppressed. I'll help them out. No problem. <laughs> There's nobody. That, that, that is Trump like fake. statement. That is fake news, sir. No, it's not. Give me one person that's being uh, uh, yeah, can't vote. Look at I will help them out. Right away. You can't help. They're in a I will help them out. Never mind. Okay. Who wants to go? We're going to go rebuttal now. Uh, all right. Okay. All right. We are now in the rebuttal time. Let's give Steve a hand. Candy. Who wants to give a rebuttal? Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. 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 We're not going to have to open 10 people. All right, we're going to have to open 10 people. All right, we're going to have to open 10 people. All right, we're going to have to open 10 people. All right, we're so we'll get the time. One, two, three, four. You gave me, no, you gave me four. Five, four, six, four, 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 this is the Constitution. Uh, when they used to say hail someone else uh, in the 30s and 40s, they burned books. And what's being burned first in America in the last couple months is this. That's number one. Tell the people tru the truth and the country will be safe. President Abraham Lincoln. I'm going to tell you some truth. I never know how many people in this room each Saturday night are on the payroll or auditioning to be on the payroll or are just thinking it's a TV show and not a country of 320 million people on a planet of 7 billion people. A system is the architecture by which society is built. Values are we the people's moral compasses. Budgets are the money spent on we the people's community needs. Campaigns are when we the people decide who is qualified to be in positions of public leadership and who is not. Elections are when the people affirm that honesty 
must be at the heart of government and all society. Movements are the guiding light of we the people's choice of a system. The great artist Curtis Mayfield from Chicago, poet, singer, musician, once said, if there's a hell below, we're all going to go. You reap what you sow. When you genocide a Native American people and you enslave Africans and you treat women and people with disabilities and ideological dissidents as less than nothing, you get George Bush dynasty, Bush family dynasty, Clinton dynasty, and those two families have given us this wonderful gift now in 2016, 2017 of extinctionism, Trump pensism. So I'd like to say I'm very angry with the Koch brothers, who are never there in the public eye. I'm very angry with the Mercer family, and Sheldon Adelson, and the Walton family, and the Pritzkers. But I want to say two families in particular. Thanks a lot on the web. This is going out to them. They watch this. They're intelligence people that take all our tax dollars are watching this. Thanks a lot, Bush family. Thanks a lot, Clinton family. We could have had Bernie Sanders, but no. The rich the powerful, the influential, get all the goodies again and we don't even get crumbs. Those of us who worked. My father was a nuclear physicist. He was one of the smartest people probably in his graduating class at University of Illinois. My mother was an operating room nurse for 33 years. 18 of those years she had multiple sclerosis. She still doesn't have single pair health care and has to pay co-pays at the doctor's office. I've worked my whole life in Illinois in social services and I still have not made more than 17000 a year. Am I asking for a handout to the people who say we're all left-wing, people who wear black clothes? I see a lot of people on C-SPAN every day wearing black clothes. So I don't know what black clothes have to do anything with anything. Just another distraction. How much time do I have left? You got uh, a minute. A minute. Henry David Thoreau once said in The Duty of Civil Disobedience, let your life be a counter friction to the machine. What I have to do is to see at any rate that I do not lend myself to the wrong which I condemn. I loved the fact last year that Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton and another Bush wasn't in office. What I would have loved also after that one second of loving that fact is if Bernie or Jill Stein were in it instead of someone who's proud of fascism and extinction in them. Free speech is alive and well. Number one. Who wants to go after that? Who's Verklempt? Come on. Don't feel Verklempt. We got some for Verklemption here. <laughs> we got it right here. The clock is right here. Go ahead. I can't say it. Give me a minute. All right, go ahead. All right, all right. So maybe I'll run for alderman. Yeah. All right, all right. All right. Keep inspired. 50, 50th board. Keep inspired. So Thomas Jefferson, who was a rich slave owner, he owned a plantation, he was an architect, and he said he wanted a revolution every 20 years. And he was a he was a great leader and he started a revolution. And some people say that people now the left wing is all complainers. All they do is complain about how terrible things are. And so did Jefferson. Jefferson complained. And he wrote the Declaration of Independence. He was complaining about taxes by bad bad taxes, the tea tax that the evil king of England had. <laughs> and, and now Trump, and now we're, we got too many taxes. We got oil tax and gas tax, and we're paying taxes through our noses for the oil companies. Drugs come in on airplanes and cars and trucks. They don't come in with people, four people with no shoes and end up dead. 100 dead in the desert. They're not carrying pounds of heroin. Yeah, exactly. Are you crazy? Mm -hmm. Are you serious? They come from you, Afghanistan. They come in planes in LAX and Chicago O'Hare, and they get in through there. 
and these jobs that Trump saved, Carrier and Ford, they still went to, there's still jobs that went to Mexico from Carrier and Ford. So he didn't stop anything. And healthcare is very expensive, and people get sick and die because they can't afford their health care. Mm -hmm. And this Trump care is going to be tremendous. Oh, it's yeah. going to be great. <laughs> Give me a break, please. Oh, it's going to be better than Obamacare? Yeah, the right. Plan. Obamacare is not very good, but it's better than nothing. It's better than what the insurance companies can write. How much time do I have? Uh, two minutes, two, a minute thirty. Okay. So the media, talking about the evil media. If you turn on WLS 89, 890 AM, it's all conservative media. It's None of it's liberal. And they're always talking about um, Levine. Rush Limbaugh. Rush Limbaugh. Levine, um, Hannity, um, Michael, whatever. Savage. Uh, all the, all the jobs. Yeah, Mike all Pence the Pence, yeah. All those guys. And they, this is not the liberal media. This is the conservative media. And they're on 24 hours a day, 50,000 watts. They're on the internet. And so, and if you get the, the 10 o'clock news, what do they have? Somebody getting shot on the south side, some African American killing another African American. So this is just more racism, more, mm. more, more the negativity. Negativity. Thank Fear you. Baiting. Fear baiting. Fear baiting. Fear Race baiting. baiting. Yeah. Right, and just to keep white people happy and in their lovely neighborhoods and voting for whoever is running. Thank you very much. All right, all right. All right. I got bad news about Sean Spicer, because I think Melania is going to fire him. So that's pretty, yeah. So you dorks. No, <laughs> I can't do any more Sean Spicer invitations, but, um... What's going to happen to Melissa McCarthy? I know. The first Sean Spicer uh, was the best. Oh, my God. All right, so I wanted to give Trump, Trump the benefit of the doubt. I don't think he expected to be president, so, you know, this is kind of a cluster this first 100 days. He's got a line for doing the job. It'll probably take him two years to learn the job. Hopefully in two years we can drain the Republican swamp in the midterms. So then I would really like Trump if he did that. If he does that. Yeah, right. You never know. I mean, but, you know, if the, this, the things turn out really bad, I don't see a lot of people voting for Republicans next year. So, I, you know, other things, I got the plus and minus. I call the Ben Franklin method when you put pluses and minuses. No? So the pluses I wanted to give Trump the uh, benefit of that was like a trillion in infrastructure so he could build some cool bullet trains. And then um, he didn't like Bush in the Iraq war. He thought that was stupid. So I, you know, I thought that was okay. Trump said that, and then he was tough on the media. You know, the, the mainstream media really sucks now because it's all commercials and, you know, corrupted editors, and you just can't trust the stories that come out. And it's mostly about pharmaceutical ads. So um, those are kind of the things I thought Trump was uh, hitting the right buttons on. But then he started coming out being anti-EPA. How could you be against the pollution? I, I mean, how could you, like... He's for pollution. You know, it's, like, stupid. <laughs> how could you have a moron from Oklahoma, the oil capital, running the EPA? If you want more people on the EPA to protect our hair. We got all these cancer cases as it is. And he's anti-poor. He, you know, screw the middle class, screw the poor, screw Meals on Wheels. And then he says the media he wants to ruin the First Amendment. He's, he's anti-Constitution. You know, he can't talk. Um, so, and then he wants to add on to the War Department. In our War Department, our military, our Defense Department is larger than the next than the next ten militaries combined. 
and he wants to spend money on that crap. You know, bombing, all we end up doing is bombing grandparents and kids with our tax dollars. You're, you all paid for that. So, so you know, uh, let's see what he does with wars. If he turns into a moron with wars, I'll be really mad about that. He already had. And I, I really think Trump has dementia. I saw something about or the beginning stages. I saw the example of how he spoke when he was in his 40s and how he speaks now. And he has real trouble putting together sentences. And, and, and he was pretty eloquent in his 40s. Um, but um, I think he's, they, they made a case that he has the beginning of dementia. So that could be probably he's the oldest president we've ever had. So um, I think Trump's. Just, I don't know, I don't think he expected to be president. He's like 20 years behind the times, it seems, as far as environment and oil issues are going. So let's just hope, let's just hope we don't have wars. Okay. All right, Mike. All right, Mike. All right, Mike. Two parts. Oh, I'm number four. I'm number four. You gave me number four. Go ahead. I'm going. You got four minutes. Try to make some sense. <laughs> My name is Mo Shanfield, and I ran for Congress. I was on the ballot as the Green Party candidate. Talking to the Mo, mic. Speaking to the mic. I was on the ballot as the Green Party candidate, congressional candidate, in the ninth district, of course, against Dan Schakowsky. Uh, and I learned something very, very important. Oh yeah, I got 3,990 votes. Jan Joukowsky yeah. yeah. got um, about 185,000, I think. But my voters were smarter than hers. Um, but there's something important that happened after the election. What happened was the Democratic state organization was looking for somebody to replace whom? A senator. How, how soon we forget? Barack Obama. Jan Joukowsky's ambition was to uh, get the nomination for the Senate. They didn't give it to her. Why not? Because of me! And here's the deal. My uh, 3,990 votes may not seem like very much, but they were an indication of the weakness <coughs> that Jan Schakowsky would um, bring to the whole race. And she might bring a lot of people down. She might not get elected. I could be wrong, but that's a possible, very possible, um, consequence of a, of, a, of a losing independent or Green Party or radical, whatever you want, candidacy. So if you're contemplating running, don't worry about winning. You want to maximize your vote. That's true. But in most cases, uh, progressives, Greens, etc., don't win. But they raise issues. During the campaign, my main thrust during the campaign in my two-minute speech on Channel 11 was um, to bring back the <coughs> industrial mobilization of 1942. On December the 7th, 1941, unemployment was at 10%. Roosevelt and the generals in the Pentagon, much more than Donald Nelson and the other civilian production managers, um, engineered the spending of guess how much money for the war effort in 2017 terms. Would anyone have a guess? 20 million. Huh? 20 million. 20 million. 20 million. No, no, the no, Japanese no, no. would have conquered Pearl, uh, California. That, that was our expenditure. <laughs> close to a trillion. Now you're getting closer. Eight trillion dollars! Don't shout at the mic. Oh, don't shout at the mic. <laughs> the Republicans have been hocking at China uh, about us being broke uh, in November of 41. But uh, fortunately, Admiral Yamamoto, as he said, woke a sleeping giant. 
So I was advocating a, an industrial mobilization to produce electrical, uh, I mean, uh, wind, solar power, geothermal power, etc., and get rid of all the oil and, and coal. And you are crazy. And nuclear. Um, the Republican candidate picked up my references to wind power. That's another side benefit of a losing campaign. So don't worry about winning. I got time here, and uh, Jan Zikowski called time on me too. But, uh, I'm, I'm, still going. I'm still going. All right. Well, uh, Trump nominated Jeff Sessions for Attorney General, and Jeff Sessions wants to impose uh, harsher uh, penalties for drug possession. Today I saw a documentary uh, about Rikers Island. Rikers Island contains a lot of people who uh, haven't yet been convicted of a crime, but have been accused of a crime and have been unable to even pay their bail. The uh, vast majority of these people are either black or brown in color. And um, what the war on drugs does is that it, it, it's a great way for, for keeping us as the number one nation, that we are the top nation, we have the largest number of incarcerated people uh, on, out of all the nations on the planet. And the war on drugs is just a way of keeping down um, people who are either poor or uh, in minority communities, and it's very successful. In fact, one of the speakers, uh, African American lawyer who represents uh, poor um, uh, poor people who've been accused of a crime, has said that she doesn't think the system's uh, broken. She thinks the system works perfectly fine and works perfectly well, uh, and manages to keep people down. Uh, Rikers is no place that anyone wants to be. It's it's a tough uh, tough place and. Uh, the war on drugs is, is uh, most, the vast, the, the demographic that uses drugs the most are white people, the demographic that gets arrested for possession or dealing in drugs are black people, and it, it's uh, just a way to oppress people. Uh, just, I find uh, Jeff Sessions, his nomination to be very, very worrisome. Thank you. Four minutes. Uh, my name is Dennis Nelson, and, and I'm starting by saying one thing. I'm going to repeat it twice. I told you so. I told you so. Uh, the first 100 days of the Trump administration were nothing short of a walking and talking, brain dead disaster for our environmental, energy, climate, and conservation policy. The Trump administration apparently wants to outdo the Reagan administration and the Bush Cheney administration by uh, taking the dishonor of being the most ecologically irresponsible in history. Well, there's enough material that I could easily do my own 45 minute to one hour presentation about this, and I'll do my best to cover some of the highlights. Trump's eco report card, he flunks big time. This is from Defenders of Wildlife, dated Wednesday, May 3rd of this year. The first 100 days of the Trump administration were nothing short of a disaster for wildlife. These attacks and actions overtly and unabashedly defy science, facts, and reason. The first 100 days of the Trump administration have included President Trump's approval of Congress's action for sending the Alaska National Wildlife Refuges Rule, potentially allowing for extreme killing methods like shooting mother bears with cubs and killing wolves with pups during denning season on national wildlife refuges in Alaska. An executive order calling for construction of a U.S.-Mexico border wall that could jeopardize the existence of at least 89 endangered or threatened species and 108 migratory bird species. An executive order to review and reconsider the clean water rule and putting our national health at risk and an executive order instructing the Department of the Interior to review offshore drilling restrictions in the Arctic, Atlantic, and Pacific Oceans. This is from National Sierra Club, Thursday, April 27th of this year. In a stunning reversal, Trump's appalling new executive order calls for a review of decades of national monuments designated under the 1906 Antiquities Act. We know what review really means. 
It's the first step towards opening millions of protected acres to drilling by the oil and gas industry, clear cutting by the timber industry, hard rock mining by the minerals industry, and mining by the coal industry. It's unequivocally unprecedented. Never in the Antiquities Act's 111 year history has a president attempted to eliminate a national monument. This is from Illinois Sierra Club, Monday, May 8th of this year. Well, I'm a Prairie State Defender with the Illinois Sierra Club, and I came out for the People's Climate March Chicago on Saturday, April 29th of this year. On May 9th of this year, I submitted a comment to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, U.S. EPA, saying no to regulatory rollbacks. The U.S. EPA has opened a docket for public comments as the agency looks to enforce Trump Administration Executive Orders 13777 and 13783 on regulatory reform and climate action. Executive Orders 13777 and 13783 together present the biggest attack on climate action and climate safeguards in U.S. history. These orders not only strike down the Clean Power Plan and other carbon reducing regulations from the Obama administration, but specifically direct the U.S. EPA to identify rules to roll back or weaken. The language says that regulations are a burden on the American people, but we all know that these safeguards are necessary for our health and livelihoods. I think my time's just about up. Yep. And so I told you so, I told you so. And I'd like to be a keynote speaker for the September 2nd when we can come back and t talk about the Trump disaster in more detail. Thanks a lot. All right, Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Four yeah. minutes. All right. Well, anyway, regarding uh, Steve, I didn't know Steve was a Republican. I always thought he was a, a liberal <laughs> like some of the rest of us. But I, I will say this, uh, in Donald Trump's favor, in his first hundred days, he's been doing what he said he was going to do or he's been trying. And that is sometimes kind of rare among politicians. I do not like what he's trying to do. I did not vote for him. I do not support him. But at least he is, uh, he is attempting to do what he said he was going to do. Fortunately, he is not succeeding all that well. Uh, even the Republicans in Congress are, are holding back a little bit uh, on that. And I maintain, I said this before, I said this last week, I've said it many times, people still haven't figured out, particular Democrats, uh, what really happened. Why did this man, who uh, is, is so crazy in so many ways, get 60 million votes? Uh, and the reason that he got 60 million votes is because he understood, or perhaps he didn't understand, he just uh, fell into it, the extreme anger among Americans. And when people are angry and hurting, they will often make decisions that are not to their best interest, like the horses running back into the burning barn. Uh, I think we have a lot of that. But I don't think it's, I don't think that people, if we had the election today, I think Trump would win. But yeah, we have to keep on going and working. Now, people are talking about impeachment. Uh, that's quite possibly what will happen to this man. But I think the Republicans are, are holding their breath, wishing the Democrats would push it forward. But the Democrats are saying, hey, who do we want in the White House during the uh, 2018 election cycle? Do we want crazy man Trump, or do we want uh, uh, Pence, who we, who we like even less, but at the same time, he, he seems to be competent and, and sane, even if we disagree with him. And so I don't think the Democrats will, will want to see impeachment until after the 2018 elections. Regarding the Electoral College, I'm not an expert, but there are some deep roots, and I've heard a few Democrats say, uh, no, that's not the problem. The problem, you know, the Democrats lost twice in a row uh, in the Electoral College while winning, not twice in a row, but twice in five elections. Uh, They've had more votes, but uh, lost in the Electoral College. Uh, based on an understanding of that, uh, I voted for Jill Stein, because here in Illinois, it doesn't matter how you vote, we know where Illinois is going to go. Uh, those of us who want to help uh, with the Electoral College should either move to Wisconsin, move to Iowa, move to Michigan, Pennsylvania, Ohio, or whatever. And there our votes uh, could actually make a difference. What we need to do to improve our system here, a few things. Get the money out of politics, period. And I know I won't get much support from my friend Pat Butler here, but that means eliminating almost all paid-for political advertising, both in the electronic 
and in the pin and in the print media. Uh, and then uh, multiple parties. I think we need multiple parties. That's what yeah. we will sign. I didn't expect her to win. Yeah. Uh, and term limits is another one. And yeah, of course, yeah. we lose yeah. some good people, but at the same time, we keep fresh blood. In fact, I'm so uh, set on this that I would enforce, if I were king, I would enforce <laughs> term limits not just in the public sector, but in major corporations with thousands of employees yeah. and a big effect on our life. I would enforce term limits for the board of directors and the CEOs of these yeah. uh, major corporations. So you get a little fresh uh, blood in there. Uh, and uh, as far as the Supreme Court, I think I'm agreeing with Steve on this. I think uh, we should have term limits on the Supreme Court too. Okay. I disagree on the VA. Uh, I'm a veteran. Uh, I've gone to the VA hospital. I once had a job where I could get health care uh, in, in the more traditional sense. I did that for a while and I went back to the VA because it is so, so uh, much more supportive in so many ways. Now, I understand the problem. It, it is a duplicate system and that, that is a problem. Obamacare has proven to do what Democrats said it would do, which is not necessarily solve all the problems, but it would be an opening. And if you look at what Republicans are saying about what we need in health care, can you imagine Republicans have been in favor of some of the provisions of their plan eight years ago? Not a chance. They are now because of Obamacare. Uh, I think it's time. Okay. Yes, we should organize, but the main thing we need to do is sharpen the pitchforks. Oh, yeah. All right, Ernie. Another Ernie. Give him hell. Give him hell. Just an opening remark here. Uh, Ernie. I normally find you to be the voice of reason and wisdom and uh, a person that I generally agree with. However, uh -oh. we must part uh -oh. company tonight on two points. Number one, when I hear term limits, I reach for my gun if I were carrying one. Uh, the reason being, ask yourselves, each of you, aren't you better at what you do now than you were eight years ago? Yes. The answer is probably for most of us, yes. I'm a newspaper reporter. I think I am, and a lot of people will agree, a hell of a lot better now than I was when I started in this racket, or I mean business. Uh, the fact of the matter is we all get better with experience and time. Except politicians. Yeah. Not always. Uh, uh, not always. He's right. When I uh, you know, you look, ar you look around and let's say you get sick. Do you want a doctor who's a day out of medical school or do you want a guy who has been treating your same kind of disease for the last 20 years and those six different ways of approaching it? If you're in deep legal trouble, if you're in deep legal trouble, do you want a lawyer who just passed the bar exam or do you want a guy who is going to get you off uh, you know, of the crime that could send you to the gallows. You know, the fact of the matter is that uh, some of these uh, bright, starry-eyed idealists who have had no experience, those are the kinds of guys that when they're finished with you and they've done what they can for you, you don't need an appellate lawyer, you need a priest. Uh, you know, so I mean, we have to be realistic. Experience oh, oh. makes people more valuable. And I think that's true also with politics. You know, we, we, we like to lump politicians together, and uh, it's not always true. We have in the Illinois State Legislature, for example, you guys probably, many of you know Sarah Fagenholtz. Yes. Wouldn't you agree that Sarah Fagenholtz uh, is a fine person and a fine politician who does a lot of work for people? Uh, wouldn't you also agree, and having known her from the days when she was an aide uh, in Bernie Hansen's office, wouldn't you agree that she is now much more effective and would not be able to do so if we had term limits? So think about it because if you get what you think you want, you may be giving away a lot of valuable stuff. Now, it was pointed out incidentally that uh, one thing Trump did was keep or attempt to keep all of his promises in the first hundred days. May I point out that a certain, uh, a certain Austrian illegal immigrant who became, uh, who became the Chancellor of Germany 
uh, also did the same thing in the first hundred days. The difference, however, is, and I am, please, don't misunderstand me, I am no admirer uh, of Der Fuhrer or his system at all, period. But the fact of the matter is that he knew exactly what he was going to do, evil as it was, and how to do it. In the case of Donald Trump, can we really say he is really prepared for the job yes. that he took on? No. I mean, yes. really. I mean, can you picture Donald Trump the day after the election, he goes into his office and says to one of his aides, now what the hell are we going to do? I'm sure that that was the sort of thing, I'm sure that was the sort of thing that was going through his mind and a lot of minds. And remember, there is nothing more dangerous than a person who is playing with very big, dangerous toys and doesn't know how to handle them. This is not a job for amateurs. This is not a job for starry-eyed people who think they're going to change the world and in so doing may run the risk of eliminating the world as we know it today. And I think my time is up. Donald Trump can be best explained by one phrase, the flim flam man. <laughs> yeah. Donald Trump is a, was, is a cut of the same cloth from P.T. Barnum. Yeah. Now remember, P.T. Barnum had the greatest show on earth. He entertained people, and he had a ton of logistics behind his circus. It's had a successful run of well over 150 years. Trump is a lot the same way. He tries to sell us on his ideas about making America great again. The only reason we elected him is because enough people believed in what he was saying and why. Frankly, I'm getting tired of seeing politicians who claim to be outsiders, who claim to want to drain the swamp, and who claim they want to just take their stuff and be done with everything and make change. We've seen enough of that with Browner. No budget after two years. What was he going to do? Shake up Springfield. Oh, he did. <laughs> what are we seeing with Trump? I'm going to drain the swamp. We've seen nothing but controversy. And according to David K. Johnson, a our, 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 our book writer who wrote the book on Trump, he said, it's only a matter of time before we have our first constitutional crisis. Personally, if Trump was to really make America great again, the first bill he should pass and bring to immediate consideration in Congress would be the rare metals and thorium energy security. <laughs> yes, thorium. thorium. This would, this would basically energy. bring Nuclear prosperity energy. to our country by introducing clean, effective, carbon-free energy, which would be cheap, which would help us on our environment. We all know that people need water, they need electric power, they need food production, and I can think of no better way than to provide that but by clean, burning nuclear power in the form of molten, thorium right. molten salt reactors. Yes! But, and proving once and for all that renewables are never going to provide enough power to cover our dependence on oil. Why? Because, Charlie, you're wrong. You're absolutely wrong. Uh -oh. Renewables are renewable. We only have. Renewables are renewable. They're renewable, but they don't prove they're intermittent. There's days the sun don't shine. There's days that the wind don't blow. And what happens? They're backed up by natural gas plants. Are you smarter than the German economists and engineers? As a matter of fact, Mo, energy prices are higher now in Germany than they've ever been. And the thing that you've got to understand is that Germany is having power problems. They're importing half of their power from France, which is 
which is about 90% base nuclear. That program has been a failure. There has not been any carbon reduction. There has not been anything else. You look at the facts of the matter, you'll see exactly where I'm coming from. I'll cite them. I'll be more than happy to. But let's get back on point. If Trump really wants to be a good president, wants to do something revolutionary, Mr. Trump, why don't you take a look at what the Thorium Energy Alliance is promoting, and I think you'll find you have a plan there to really make America great again. TNT! Yeah. Trump yeah. and Thorium! Exactly. Trump yeah. and Thorium! Exactly TNT! Four exactly four minutes. Exactly four minutes. <laughs> You're again. You want your seat Sir. back? Sir. Hi. Sir. I'm Ellen Corley. I've been here a few times now. I love this forum. Yeah. Uh, I think it's great to have a chance to yeah, I just speak up about public issues and free speech. It's critical. Um, I have a lot to rebut in your uh, talk. Um, I think, I'm trying to think which, the main point I think is that I believe that politics should get out of policy. You know, that a lot of scientifically based policies were in place. And I think that, you know, the politicians have they made it a, it's not science, they rigged it basically so that they they could get the governors, you know, the right wing could take, they do a coup d'etat. And I, you know, I happen to know my stepfather was part of this Trump team and and I, my feeling when this Betsy McCoy, his girlfriend who kidnapped my whole family and took them away, she was an expert in making up a lie about the Hillary care plan and they made up the death panels. And so I got to see up close that the lobbyists and the politicians work on the media and put in lies in order to, you know, get their agenda. And, uh, you know, which is cut, you know, supply side economics, make it so that we cut off the people and, you know, let the 1% get all the money. This is fascism, you know, but I was like, how are we going to prove it? I mean, it, it's, you know, we had all these civil right protections and we had environmental protections and welfare and health care and, and the, you know, standing rock. So many things were there and you just can't believe that this guy is as bad as Hitler. And, uh, and what gets me is nobody even mentions corruption or fascism, even on NPR, which I listen to all day. And I'm, because I noticed when the corporations bought them out, somebody named Goldie, and they, you know, started firing the good editors and putting in entertainment people. But anyhow, I searched for what law could impeach him, and one I found is these lobbying laws, uh, but they kind of throw them out, all the, all the things that we did to protect corruption. There were honest services laws. They may push those to the states. They go to the whole states' right, Federalist Society. Now, you know, Neil Gorsuch was Federalist Society plan. Every single judge they're putting in, they go, well, admittedly, they're all part of the Federalist Society. The Federalist Society is a, they, the Nazis came in to the CIA and the judicial system, and they're implanted in there, and they, and the Federalist Society, and they, this is Carl Schmitt's, Hitler's jurist, came up with this unitary executive idea of, you know, executive, we are just, throw out the health care, you know, they don't get to, no tape recordings, we do whatever we want, Patriot Act, you know, this is not a constitutional, because it's all security, private contractors out there getting killed and bombed, and, you know, the fact that, Trump goes off there to Saudi Arabia and Israel and Vatican today announces billions in bombs that he's selling. Back in the 70s, they, they were like, are you really allowed to sell a bomb? And that's all he's doing, jobs, jobs, jobs. I mean, this, he's worse than Hitler. And I just, but I, I finally got the answer when I heard Roy Cohn was his mentor. They talked 15 times a day. Watch Angels for America. Look at Roy Cohn. He's, he looks like him. He, you get the presence of disgusting evil in the, by this guy. And this is the plan that he's that he's embracing. So I want to give a talk on that sometime. All right, all right. 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 Okay, one minute wrap it up. Let's thank our speaker very much. Yeah.
I'll be real quick here. Um, I agree entirely with you, Pat Butler, on uh, getting rid of the incumbents. Uh, there's nothing that indicates that someone in, in an occupation at some period of time becomes less competent. That's not the case. I don't know why, Ernie, you would even think that's the case. That someone becomes worse at what they do the longer they do it. That's never been established in employment practices. So I don't know why should apply. Being an elected representative is a job. If you were having brain surgery on Monday, would you want someone who had never done it before? There's somebody who had done it for decades. Be serious. It's ridiculous. That's why unions emphasize seniority and guarantee it. That's why in, re in, in a layoff situation, you base it upon seniority. There's things, a thing called years of credible service, which qualifies in many situations, at least in civil service situations. Getting rid of incumbents, if you can establish to me at what year an elected official becomes bad, until such time, you're just knocking nothing. Absolutely nothing. All right, next thing is program. Uh, I, repeat, I often speak to new, but I do, I speak all the time, to new, newly hired federal employees. Uh, you have to serve in a probationary period minimum of one year up to three years, or even perhaps longer, in order to be qualified as an employee. Up until such time, you are not an employee of the government. You may get a check, you may get money, but you are not an employee. Until such time, you can be removed with a little memo that says, thank you very much. Bush, uh, Trump, amazingly, I was trying to think about this. I've heard a lot of people let go within the first year. They're talking about it. He hasn't even been in the position for three months. <laughs> to some kind of record. <laughs> this is just inconceivable. And I don't know what he's accomplished. Oh, you say he's done everything he said he was going to do. The only thing they have done was to pass this crazy Trump care law through the House, which is nothing but a tax cut for the rich. If that's an accomplishment, you give me your list of what he did. What else I did they do? What else did, did they do? He so he do. did nothing. He, he did on. nothing but a stupid law that I don't know why you would pass the law that you would say is no good. Why don't you go back and what is when you get work and you say, well, this is no good, and you say, well, I'm going to take it back. Why don't you take my inferior, incorrect work anyway? <laughs> Finish the law, make it good. Don't pass it on. Say, oh, well, it's no good. And last of all, uh, we've heard tonight, and we're going to be talking about it, Tim and I, this is all fake, fake stuff. This is like Russian propaganda here. This guy's been nothing but lies. He told 100 lies I discovered within the first 36 days in office. We heard 100 of those lies tonight. This is fake news. Where this was wrote this? Some Russian? Get this to you? Some guy? <laughs> this is all fake news. Get out of here. Yet! 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 Andy, it's now way okay, uh, so make it quick, please. Yeah. Right on the bat, uh, I'd like to thank our speaker tonight. Um, Yay! Yay! Our speaker tonight gave a, a brilliant presentation of a type that is talked about in censored news, Empire Files. There's a book called Lies Incorporated. Um, <laughs> Those three things, and, uh, and those of you that have access to the internet, I would uh, encourage you to get reference books and go back and look at the statements that were made here tonight over and over by our speaker. He gave a tremendous presentation about how 60 million people, a quarter of the voters, could vote for Trump. 75% uh, didn't vote for Trump. So number one, you know, our speaker basically told 
over and over again stressed five big whoppers that have no basis in reality at all. They're, it's their mythology and they're promoted by the mainstream media. I talk about censored news all the time. It's 24-7. You promote the myth on all channels and you simultaneously black out the scientific reality. So, those five whoppers are, number one, that Trump was elected by the American people. He wasn't. Only less than a quarter of the country actually voted for him, and there was massive voter suppression in 30 states, long lines with Democrats. The idea that Trump won the election is a fairy tale from day one, and you could you would be laughed out of any court if you went in there and tried to refute the evidence. Number two, the idea that we have a free press and a liberal media in this country is a total myth. The press is owned by billionaires, and the press runs coordinated blackouts on things that matter. Otherwise, if the press was doing their investigative job and we weren't running blackouts, we would not have a speaker come up here tonight and pr uh, promote one fairy tale after another enthusiastically as if it were real and as if he believes it. Uh, a lot of times I don't know if the speaker believes what he's talking about or if he's just yanking our chain. Which is it? Yeah. Another one. Why do our pollsters get it wrong? How come the pollsters in other countries uh, accurately reflect uh, the vote totals? Well, the pollsters in this country poll people that vote and then the criminals in about 30 states change the totals after we go to bed so that the, the, the totals that they announce the next day don't match what the polls said. That's why the, why the pollsters yeah. get getting wrong, because they've been changing the vote totals yeah. since Bush lost the election in 2000. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> With another thing, major thing, that our government has checks and balances in the Congress. The Patriot Act, the Patriot Act was passed by our Senate and Congress with these strict instructions that you don't want to aggravate Dick Cheney. You get out there and vote for this and then in a couple of weeks we'll give you a, uh, maybe some paper copy so you can read it. They weren't permitted to meet, read the Patriot. A lot of legislation is rammed through Congress with no checks and balances when you have Republican criminals in charge. And then finally, yeah, just the idea, well, you know, uh, this is the 40th anniversary, the 40th anniversary of Censored News, Censored 2017, the edition is out now, I encourage everybody to get a copy of it and use it as a reference, because a lot of the whoppers that were told here tonight are debunked in that book with massive references yes, all over the place. Wow. Okay? Thank you. Speaker right. gets the last word. Speaker gets the last word. All right, I get the last word, huh? I want to thank everybody for having a grand old party over here. We had a good time, didn't we? And, 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 and one more thing, I'd like to censor this guy right here. Can we censor him back to the Stone Age? Let's get that on film. Censor this guy. He's one of these guys right here. Thanks, everybody. All right, thanks. That's how you win an argument, people.